coming after the president scrapped off the Ministry of Devolution during unveiling of his cabinet. Held is among the functions shared between the two levels and the president has promised to ensure the bottlenecks hampering effective service delivery are addressed. This administration is going to work with the Council of Governors in accordance with the law and the constitution. Also want to do the smaller dams and we are targeting almost a thousand small dams across the country. Since his inauguration, President Ruto insisted that the cabinet secretaries will present themselves to the floor of the House to answer to the legislators on their performance in their respective ministries. Currently, cabinet secretaries can only be summoned by their respective department or committees to answer questions but not on the floor of parliament. There is no provision in the constitution that bars a cabinet secretary from attending the House to answer to questions. Uh, since these questions are intended to assist the House to resolve issues that are of concern to the people. One, uh, it has to be a matter of government policy. Two, a question of great national importance. Of course, it has to be something also of great public interest, not personal interest. And when someone is performing, they'll also understand they're going to account to Parliament and they're going to account to the people of Kenya. So I think it's very good utilization of the articles of constitution. That Any government agency that decides to take another government agency to court, whoever are responsible for the court matters, they will pay using their own money. The meeting with the leadership from the Senate and National Assembly has culminated into a formula in which the CSs will engage with the lawmakers for accountability sessions. Flora Limuki, TV 47. And from at the state of uh, the nation to some politics, the journey to succeed President William Ruto come 2027 have already started taking shape with the Wampa Party leader Kalonzo Musioka's allies insisting that he is the best suited to take over the presidency from William Ruto. Paul Kirobi with more. The new year seems to have come with a renewed political impetus in the Wiper Party camp, with its leader Kalonzo Musyoka seemingly kick-starting his plan to square it out with President William Ruto in the 2027 presidential race. The new energy in the Wiper Party is reportedly causing disket within Azimio circles, with affiliate parties including ODM feeling like the move could scaffold their immediate agenda of putting the William Ruto administration in check. Already, Kalonzo stalwart in the Wiper Party feel he should be the one to occupy the office of the official opposition once it is created, further setting the stage for a brawl between the leadership of Azimio coalition, with sources saying that both Odinga and Kalonzo are gearing up for the office. Already, Kalonzo's political leaders from Kambani region are pushing their boss to be given the position in preparation for 2027 elections under the Azimio coalition. Tutakuwa na kinara. Sio lasima uyo kinara. Akuwe Raila. Na sio lasima mwanza wake akuwe madha karua. Tutanjipanga na tutaangalia wale viongozi ambao wanaweza ngoa ruto kwa serikali. Ruto arudi nyumbani kwa sababu ruto amekuja na a lot of promises. While dismissing division in the coalition, Kalonzo Musyoka has remained edgy with information on his next political step. Kumbuka huyu senator wa, wa wapi wa kitui, eh, Enoch, akisema kuwe na sober reflection. I think that's a correct thing, sober reflection. Mm -hmm. eh, eh, watu bila, bila ku, kujipendekeza, bila kuleza ah, wakati ni sasa masio sasa ni sasa hivi, eh, that kind of approach. His ally is saying that it is time Odinga backs Kalonzo for the top seat as he is best suited to take the presidency from William Ruto. Utawezesha chama iki kunyakuwa uongozi 2027. That is our reason. Lazima tujiandai kuchagua kuchukua usukani wa kuongoza inchi. Tukiwa wanawai papeke yetu ama pamoja na mungano wa Kenya wa Zalendo ambao Ukambani leader says Waila has little chance in the next polls and should therefore declare his support for Kalonzo Ali. This comes even as Odinga has categorically stated that he was not hanging his boots yet, an indication that he could still be in the race in 2027. 
mpaka hapa jua kuna pale ambapo sisi tutawacha the push to install kalonza's flag bearer could also unsettle martha karua or dingas running mate in the august race and other coalition leaders who have expressed an interest in the top seat such as wickliffe oparanya hassan joho eugene wamalwa and gideon moy paul kirobi tv 47 Nairobi. And from matters politics to matters education, a week before the Ministry of Education concludes the Form 1 selection exercise, parents have raised concerns over the short period of time accorded to them by the ministry. They have also complained that the 2023 academic calendar gives very short holiday periods. As the Ministry of Education is expected to conduct Form 1 selection by January 16th, parents have faulted the ministry for delaying the exercise, expressing fears that they might not have enough time to adequately prepare to take their children to school given the economic constraints. Paka saa hii ninapoongea selection ijafanywa. Nimesikia sijaridhika na delay ya serikali. Mimi kama mzazi na feel hiyo time haitakuwa enough kwa kutayarisha mtoto kwenda form 1 tai uchumi umekuwa mgumu mno parents are now calling on the ministry to give them more time by rescheduling the dates for admission to the week of 5th february and not january 30th as it is scheduled kama mimi ni mzazi naishi hapa kwa njenga slums mtoto wangu alipita vizuri alipata 421 marks na mimi mwenyewe sina kazi na siwe sijui vile nitampeleka mimi tunaweza nunua sanduku waambie unafaa ununue briefcase unafaa ununue kama ni tawali ama ni sijui nini waambie ni kitu fulani unaona pia ni ngumu kama itaongeza kwa muda kama kitu one week itakuwa sawa but kwa wasasi wengine wenye tuko chini pia sio mzuri Stakeholders in the education sector have also poked holes on the 2023 education calendar noting that the periods given for holidays are too short for learners to rest and to give parents enough time to prepare for the next term. Calendar iko sawa lakini holiday hapo uh, bado wamechanganya wazazi kidogo kwa sababu two weeks bado ni kidogo so ningeomba serikali waangalie mambo ya holiday usidhani kwamba tume uweza kuona yale mabadilika ambao walikuwa wamezungumzia kwenye ratiba kwa sababu nilipopitia ratiba hiyo niliona kwamba bado wanafunzi watakuwa wakienda kwenye mapumziko mafupi kwa muda wa siku tatu na labda shule zitakuwa zikifungwa kwa muda wa majuma mawili ndivyo ilivyokuwa hapa awali kwa hivyo mimi sijaona kama kuna mabadiliko ambayo tunaweza tukasema kwamba enzi zetu tulipokuwa shuleni tulikuwa tunafunga takriban Ujuma, majuma matatu ama mwezi mzima. Kwa hivyo kwa mtazama wangu nitasema kwamba bado we going back to the normal because uh, covid really disrupted learning in most um, schools and uh, it is um, a sigh of relief for the teachers, the parents and even the children that at least now they're going to uh, to rest a bit the content that they used um, to cover under very short time especially on the last lot at least these particular candidates of this year they have all the time to prepare for the exams as much as we might have uh, two weeks holiday that is uh, during the april uh, season but uh, you look at the november holidays november and december they are coming back so uh, the learners are going to have quite uh, a lot of time so it is good news for the education uh, stakeholders according to the calendar schools will open for first term on 23rd january and run for 13 weeks until april 24th with a mid term break of 3 days between 23rd to 26th march learners will have a two week break from 24th april to 7th may when they will return to school for the second term The second term will also have 13 weeks with a 3-day midterm break from 29th June to 2nd July and will break on 11th of August for another 2-week holiday. The third term of 2023 will be short by 2 weeks running from 28th of August to 3rd November to pave way for KCPE on 6th November and KCSE on 10th of November 2023. Sylvia Nyongesa, TV 47. Right now, if you thought the Christmas mood is over, listen to this story. Orthodox Christians in Kenya and across the globe are celebrating the Christmas today. The January 7th date is based on the Julian calendar for religious celebrations, which existed before the Gregorian one. Here's more. Oh. 
It has been two weeks since majority of Christians around the world celebrated Christmas on 25th of December. However, for the Orthodox Church, January 7th is the day they recognize as the day Jesus Christ was born. <laughs> The difference in the timing of the Christmas celebrations stretches back to 1582 when Pope Gregory XXII ruled that the Catholic Church should follow a new calendar as it was closer to the solar calendar than the Julian calendar. <laughs> And all set ahead of today's celebration, the manger where it is believed that Jesus was born is ready. <laughs> Lighting the candle is a symbol of peace. But before we enter the church, traditions must be followed. <laughs> One must wear the nethela before being allowed to join the church service. The men and women entering the church must leave their shoes outside. It may sound absurd, but this is the tradition here. Most Orthodox churches are divided into three sections. The main hall where men sit. Another area reserved only for priests, in a place set aside for women alone, as men are not allowed to sit close to women. Yeah. Worshippers in the church worship in Amharic, the most widely spoken language in Ethiopia, and the second most spoken mother tongue in Ethiopia after Oromo. The church is lively and awash with new members including Kenyans who now tell us why they joined the Orthodox Church. Nilijua uh, through reading, nilikuwa interested na kusoma history ya church na through research nika jua kuhusu Ethiopian Orthodox Church, the head of church na yonde ilifanya nikuwa na interest ya kukuja. Persona nilikuwa nataka kujijua. So hiyo nje ya kujijua, kutafuta mini na nikapata hapa ndiyo place na za fit. Uh, your welcoming peace Nanika feel at home too. The main challenge facing the new members, especially Kenyans, is language barrier. Kwa katiwa preaching, unajua, ndu unapate na inatumika. So, ku break your language barrier, Impossible. It's just plain hard. While the Catholic and the Orthodox Church have many similarities even in their doctrines, the biggest difference between the two churches is the status of the Roman Catholic Pope. The Bishop of Rome was very early in a Christian history, given a position of honor based on the city's significance and history. But while the Orthodox are happy to recognize the Pope, they reject his supremacy over the church as a whole and the suggestion that the Pope's decision on religious matters are infallible and binding for all Christians. Paul Monio TV 47 if it is a Merry Christmas to them till to this particular uh, time. A Deputy President Rigathi Keshego has stated that since he was sworn in as Deputy President, he has been begging for food aid from foreign countries, which according to him is humiliating. Speaking on the slopes of Mount Kenya, where he had gone to pray for the country, the second in command also urged Kenyans to join in hands in combating effects of climate change. Kenyans have been urged to plant more trees as a way of combating the effects of climate change in the country and also realizing the government's target of planting 15 billion trees by 2030. According to Deputy President Rigavi Gashagwa, who was speaking during a morning hike on the slopes of Mount Kenya, the country requires sustainable solutions and interventions to deal with the ravaging drought, which has affected more than 6.1 million people in 2022, with the numbers expected to rise. We have asked our cabinet secretaries, our principal secretaries, our administrators, and all leaders, wherever they are in a public function, to plant trees so that we can preserve our water catchment areas like this one. The Kenya Red Cross has warned that the drought will last till June this year after the depressed rainfall last year. 
The second in command father noted that since he was soon in, he has been borrowing food aid from other countries under the task force of the National Steering Committee on Drought Response, a situation he cites as humiliating. Spend all the time with the foreigners begging for food, including those who colonized us. It's very humiliating. But I have no choice because we cannot let our people die. The president gave me a responsibility to mobilize food. During the COP27 in Sham El Sheikh, Egypt last year, President William Ruto rallied global leaders to fulfill the pledges of committing 100 US dollars annually, while at the same time calling on investors to tap into the green energy sector in the country. Right, and definitely, we'll definitely be expecting more in 2023 and in the next, until 2030, the whole clarion call by the government is planned 15 billion trees. Now elsewhere, former Bungoma East MP Mark Braza, whose mutilated body was found in his farm in Tongaran constituency, Bungoma County, a week ago, has been laid to rest at his village home in Bituyu. Bungoma and Transoya leaders eulogized Baraza as the man who had firm political decisions and hand worker. The political leaders led by Transoya Governor George Natembea, uh, they have called upon responsible agencies to investigate and determine what killed the former lawmaker. Mukora <laughs> Mungu arudishie hawa wenye walifanya hii na wewe ni OCS unatumaliza nguvu wewe vile ulisimama hapa ungesema tayari wawili wako ndani alafu watu watajua ya kwamba tuna security nilikuwa nafikiria kwamba polisi watafanya kazi vile nimefika hapa nikaona pia OCS anakunya maji hapa nikajua hii maneno yameharibika Wewe hey, polisi ungekuwa huko kutafuta wale ambao wameua huyu mzee. Na waje nifeme hivi. Mimi kama mjumbe kama zifanyi kazi watu ya kimili watanifuguza. Huyu kikati huyu kama afanyi kazi watu ya tongoreni hapa watanifuguza. Bwana OVS uambie OCPD yako na uambie DVIO yako. Kwa siku saba kama udakamata ambao waliwa huu mve, ufundo virago lago, ufundo kwenye nyumbani, ukawa na mbibu nyumbani kule. We have a historical responsibility. To say they were daring with modest education, but they moved, they did things that those of us who have had much more education than them look back and say, kama maka barasa alifanya hii, na kama angekua na pia jidi angefanya kafika wapi. Right, some 26, 27 minutes past the top of the hour. You're watching TV 47 Weekend. We're taking a short break. We'll be right back. Kaluma King Herbal Lozenges zinazo nguvu maradufu kutuliza kikohozi, vidonda vya koo na mafua. Kaluma King ni shwari. Eti kama mahoyo muharifu kaiba kukuzaku. Vifaraga wako na mayai zote pia kabeba. Haya eti kama mahoyo. Mumivu ya kizidi muone daktari. It's the last stretch of the season. But who will make it all the way? We have better players and a better coach. We can't lose. We have better stats and a proven track record. Sure, it's tight at the top, but my team has the experience. Because I need to lose, and I don't see that happening. Go for glory with Go TV and enjoy a home ground advantage for the thrilling season finale of the Premier League, Serie A, Champions League, Europa League, the Europa Conference League. Go TV, love it. Imagine starting your academic journey here at the foot of Mount Kenya, a place where you can call home, 
a place where we celebrate our diversity and uniqueness. A place where you can be at your best, at work and at play. That place is Embu College. There's no better place to make the difference than Embu College. Karibu Embu College, where a holistic education matters. Getting together for the first time in years was uh, a little bit awkward. Grandpa still tried to entertain us. Mom was always still in the spotlight from the kids. It wasn't until Grandma cracked a joke. That's my favorite prayer. That we got back into our groove. In this festive, DSTV is making family time even better with an upgrade. Stay connected to DSTV and we'll upgrade you to the next package for free. Tricent School of Medical Health Science and Technology is a premier training institute for market-driven courses with state-of-the-art facilities, competent and dedicated members of staff, and linkages with the medical industry, you are assured of a bright future when you study with us. Enroll today in our campuses at Juja, Nairobi West, Kisumu, and Homa Bay. I will call you in the market. 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 I will call you Nema na hitia supermarket ndiyo best Kwa mara nyingine Kiti na kulitia chota kuchota na hitia supermarket Kushiriki shindano la chota kuchota Do it Bunawe, Kitale, Bungoma, Eldore, Kakamega, Kisum, Busia, Naivasha, Limuru, Nairobi, Thika, Nyeri, Meru, Chuka, na Maua. Nunua bidhaa ya shilingi 600 na zaidi na utapewa raffle ticket. Jaza vizuri na utumbukiza kwa sanduku iliyo mlangoni. Utakuwa umeingia kwa draw ya kujishindia zawadi na dahat sumira big big is na moja aina ya tvs elfu ya moja thalathini school fees tvs shopping vouchers na vingine vingi pas ili huku saidia vimi chota kuchota imethaminiwa na kiwi bagon savannah juice fruit vial my choice hand wash zesta choco primo ketepa blue band armco oven fresh bread nivea silent night mattresses coca cola apa moja na hisense kindano hili limeithimishu na bclb promise number 002816 sheria na masharti kutumika chota kuchota na kete supermarket na hii motoka kari smart kabisa inaesa kwa yako unangocha nindi ingia fanya shopping Shopping yako heti ya supermarket Uchoto kuchote na hii kari Hii motoka inaesa kuwa yako Mutu anesa pesha kwa kuzi Heti ya supermarket A world of choice Right, thank you for sticking around. This is TV 47 Weekend. Now, four people are nursing serious injuries following a road accident on the Moya Embo Road. The accident involved a matato that was heading to Nairobi and pickup truck. An eyewitness, Samuel Miano, says the driver of the pickup truck was reckless and rammed into the matato, injuring four people. Now, the four passengers have been rushed to the Kimbimbi Sub County Hospital. The vehicles have been torn to Wanguru Police Station by traffic police officers awaiting inspection. Kulikuwa na gari ilikuwa imetoka pande ya embu na kuna ingine ilikuwa imetoka pande hii ingine mkono wa 
wa kuria sasa hapo kwa hiyo junction sisi tulikuwa tumetoka gurubani sasa wakati tumefika hapo kwa junction sisi tukakuta hizo gari tayari hizo gari tu hapo katikati hizo gari zitakuja zikagogana alafu ingine ikakuja pande moja mkono wa kushoto na hiyo ingine ikaenda upande wa kuria sisi tukaacha hapo katikati tukiwa tumesimama lakini mama akatoka akatoroka alafu mimi nika nikaacha pikipiki nikaruka nika hata nikamfuata fungu ametoka hapo pika pili kwa inauza sonda pande ya Kimbembe town kufika kwa junction ya Taisei hapo angalia pande ya right ama left akapatana na gari ilikuwa inatoka pande ya Embu ikielekea pande ya Nairobi sasa hapo ndipo wamekosa accident ili hali mtu wa gari ya sonda hakuangalia pande zote yeye ni kupita tu amepita na ndio maana akakosa hiyo accident kwa barabara lakini wakaofarap hiyo gari ndio kagongana wamekongwa na hiyo gari watu walikuwa kwa Nissan mwenye mboda kugongwa na wenye alikuwa amekopa hajakuzwa lakini wenye alikuwa kwa gari wameumia watu wane na wameambiwa na askari wa Travi wapelekwe kibibi level 4 And now back to some matters education as the candidates uh, who did the KCP examination last year prepared to join the Form 1 later this month. 35 students are among the first face of the beneficiaries of funding from Watu Credit. This funding is targeted for candidates who got 300 marks and above. The Chief Executive Officer of Watu Credit, Andres Kanep, says the goal, their goal is to help smart students achieve their dreams. Watu Credit's goal is to ensure their funding reaches more candidates who will show that they will put effort in the studies decided to support financial clients and uh, to provide their children the opportunity to take part in our scholarship program so we have people from coast region we have people from like uh, distant um, parts of uh, kenya so all across kenya so we basically uh, have chosen children who showed good results during uh, kcp exam Nimechukulia mtoto. Na ninashukuru kwa sababu anaendelea vizuri. Wamesaidia kwa sababu niko na wengine ambaye yuko mbele yake mwenye walimchukua. Mbe yuko form 3 sana ndio form 4. And the family in Shamata Nyandaro County is pleading for justice after they lost their one week old baby due to alleged negligence at the JM Karuki Hospital in Olkalu. Peter Mashare's family claims that the infant was referred to the facility after short illness but was not given the required medical attention as he passed away after the mother queued for over four hours. The family is now pleading for justice to prevail further urging the Nyandaro County government to streamline health care services at the facility. Through a press statement, the JM Karuki Rookie Hospital Management has promised to launch an investigation into the matter. We want the hospital to give us, you know, to, to, to give us explanations on, on, on what, what went wrong. Uh, to join mbona mbona mtoto anataka kwa laini 5 hours bila kutibiwa na so far we are to manage our administration na i hope that the mtoto ni pneumonia and for the ashkola ni mimi wakamweka kwa wakamweka sana before aone daktari quite an unfortunate incident right there and hopefully the authorities will take charge of that matter now to some bad monkey business farmers from Jukiini in Kirinyaga county are counting losses as aggressive monkeys invaded the farms speaking to journalists residents say the primates are posing a huge threat to the farming community and their economy by destroying their crops they have appealed to the Kenya Wildlife Service that is KWS to help do away with the monkeys before they clear their farms tunafanya kasi tunakuwa bidi lakini tuko na sida hitu bi siraribu siraribu kaawa gadamia hata maidi sasa tukatia ni jaka leo siku zote sasa tunaulisa serikali yetu ikiongozwa na ruto itusaidia na world drive tunawasi watusaidie watutoe watu zinapanda kwa hii miti zinakata yote zinaanza kukula ni kukula zinakula kila siku kutoka asubuhi hata sinaingia kwa nyumba bi mingi sana inaangamiza vitu vyote kaawa maalagwe vitu vyote inaangamiza sasa hizi hatuwezi vuna makandamia 
makadamia ndiyo tegemeo yetu na hatuwezi vuna chochote tunaomba serikali kama inaweza tutafutia njia yoyote kutuondolea hizi tumbili ndio zitoke hapa na sisi tufate faida Meanwhile, people with disability are calling on the national government and the Minister of Finance, led by Treasury CS Professor Njuguna Ndungu, to lift taxation on all assistive devices that are used by them, led by Helen Thuya, a parent of a child with autism. They have also asked the government to waive taxes charged on medicine and adult diapers that are making the commodities too costly. However, Ngecha Tigoni Ward MCA Patrick Ngaruya has assured people with disability that Kiambu County government will support them, saying that they have launched a database collection of all people with disability across its 60 wards in the county. <laughs> wanakaa miaka 5 miaka 10 mtu anakuwa mtu mzima na ako kwa darasa moja ningependa waangalie stakeholders waangalie haya masomo waone mwemavu anaweza kusomaji akuwe mtu 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 mzima baadaye mtu awakujikimu kimaisha mwenza kimwenyewe what we are lacking is schools within our our wards mtoto wangu anasoma yanga city primary ngara and i live in rimuru so lazima niende town ndio niru nirudi kumpeleka shule so if we can have these schools within our wards penye si lazima nipeleke mtoto shule iko town and they have facilities and they have the capabilities of therapy and wanaweza kusaidia watoto tunaweza shukuru sana hizo dawa ni bei kali sana kama serikali tunaweza pata hizo madawa kwa bei rahisi ama bure kwa serikali kwa government hospitals inaweza saidia sana nimechukua database ya watu wangecha tigoni ambao wako na disability ili moving forward tutakuwa tunawafikia tunawasaidia na nguo na chakula na madawa na mambo kama hayo tunaweza tujue wale ambao wako na elimu wale ambao wanahitaji ku ma, wale ambao wanastahili courses pia wale ambao wanahitaji kadi za watu ambao wa and now to matters youth empowerment, a call has been made to young people in the country to take a loan through the Youth Development Fund to strengthen the businesses. Speaking in Kisumu County after visiting the Africa Talent College, the director of the Youth Enterprise Development Fund, Faith Lukosi, encouraged young people to come forward and take a loan through the department. She said that the department aims to provide loans for commercial and agricultural funds and even for studies to young people in the country. Youth Fund is an affirmative fund that is meant for them. We have loan products that are youth friendly. We have some that are zero interest like Talanta Loan and Agribusiness. And we have other loan products for, lo uh, for business expansion. And we have loan products even for those who are starting. The Youth Enterprise Development Fund partnered with us, one, to make sure that the people that they give loans to do not default because they are working in their natural cohorts. Meaning, you can see this a person can wake up at 2 a.m. and do that same thing and be able to succeed with it and be able to pay back that loan. And Turkana County First Lady Lillian Ekamais is calling on the national government to lend a hand to Lodua prisoners who are forced to walk half-naked due to lack of clothes. Speaking after visiting the inmates in Lodua prison, Ekamais raised concern over the high number of prisoners walking half-naked in the facility as some put on torn clothes. The county's First Lady, however, declined to purchase clothes for the inmates, saying that it is against the law and it is the national government's responsibility. Turkana Woman Representative Celia Asinyan has voted to table the matter before the National Assembly. Yeah, <laughs> Before 
Right, and meanwhile, young people have been challenged to enroll in technical training institutes and pursue their highly marketable courses, especially in the growing construction industry. Speaking during the grand opening of Kigumo Technical Training College in Muranga County, Kigumo Member of Parliament Joseph Munyoro noted that the government has invested a lot in establishing technical colleges to offer more training opportunities. Munyoro called on parents to encourage their youth to take up technical courses in vocational training uh, institutions so as to gain skills that will enable them to become self-employed rather than waiting for limited white-collar jobs. Nandiyo na uliza vijana wetu tafadhali kujeni mtu wapate kosa ndiyo waeze kujipatia riziki. Saabu ukipata kosa hapa unaweza toka hapa utafute kazi na ujue utapata chakula na utasomesha watu. And still on matters education, Bungoma Diocese Catholic Church Bishop Mark Kadima has urged the government and well wishes to give education sector priority. Speaking after administering Jubilee Celebrations Mass at St. Veronica Luahaha Sub Parish in Bungoma County, His Lordship Kadima said that investing in education is the only way for prosperous generation in the future. The Catholic leadership has vowed to build primary and secondary schools in Luahaha located at the Kenya-Uganda border due to lack of schools in the area despite the large number of children. Kwa sambambu, Right, and definitely, we'll definitely be keeping you up to speed on what is happening in the country and even beyond. You can remember, you can always talk to us on our social media handles. Right, let me take you through that particular story. I think we had an audio or maybe a video challenge. Now, Bungoma Dawson's Catholic Church Bishop Mark Kadima has urged the government and well wishes to give education sector priority. Speaking after administering Jubilee Celebration Mass at St. Veronica Luahaha Sub uh, Parish in Kadima, in Bungoma County, His Lordship Kadima said that in Investing in education is the only way for a prosperous generation in future. The Catholic leadership has vowed to build primary and secondary schools in Luahaha located at the Kenya-Uganda border due to lack of schools in the area despite the large number of children. We are somebody's creation. Mtu mwingine alijinyima, okay? akatoa ndiyo sisi tukasoma kwa hivyo mimi wito wangu mimi nikiwepo hata mimi mwenyewe niko tayari kuwasaidia tusaidie wengine tusaidie tupeane tuone ya kwamba e, kama tunafahamu mtoto ambaye hana uwezo na tunaweza tusimwache akae nyumbani tusaidie katika mpaka huu wetu na Uganda hatuna shule ya sekondari hatuna shule nzuri ya primary ili watoto namba yao imeongezeka hata kwa sherehe ya leo ukiangalia watoto ndio wengi kuliko watu wazima ili wawe na msingi ulio bora kiimani na kielimu seven minutes past the top of the hour that does it for the main news and to the wonderful world of sports And locally, Kenyan football has not made any progress despite the FIFA ban imposed on the country being lifted. This is according to the Kenya Football Stakeholders Forum that comprises of club officials, former administrators and retired football players. The stakeholders who met earlier today to de deliberate on ways to upgrade football in the country stated that the current football leadership has failed the country and have no business being at the helm of Kenyan football as they await on the FIFA team to salvage the situation ahead of the first uh, of their visit to Kenya on the 9th of this month. The stakeholders have called on the FIFA team to undertake a series of measures that would lead to fresh FKF elections, including conducting a forensic audit of funds they have been dispersing to FKF for the last four years. A normalization committee to undertake the first steps of resuscitating football as pre uh, previously done by similar missions by FIFA to the country. This committee must include all, stake, all, uh, all stakeholders, including government. The committee should be tasked with uh, coming out with a roadmap that will lead to fresh 
FKF. Don't get confused. There's no football in Kenya. Everybody is just like that. Even your own kid, madam, your son is playing. Ask him where is he playing. He's in academy. What academy? Has he been registered? Is any any funds that are coming in? Nothing doing. So we need a change. We need a constitution changed. In 2010, for us to see where we are, we are, we are supposed to start. Problem in Kenyan football. If there was no problem, people were, had no business coming here. So there's a problem, there's a leadership problem. Why is the, the, FKF, the, the former FKF president implicated in, uh, why is he having a court case uh, uh, going on? Why do we have them in court if there's, if there's no problem? So you have, you have seen there's a problem. This is why we are making noise that uh, we need change. We need change. Issues rise to there, and hopefully on Monday, the 9th of January, when the FIFA team comes to Kenya, things will actually change, and you know the f football in Kenya will actually be different. Now, speaking of matters, football in the country, and we start off with some uh, FKF Premier League, the men's team. Ben Dari FC will be looking to salvage some points in order to avoid being dragged down to the relegation uh, zone when they face off with leaders Tasca FC in round 8 of the FKF Premier League at the Bandari Sports Club. Bandari sits on the 12th position in the league, standings on 5 points, only 3 points from the re relegation zone, and will be looking to use the motivation from their home fans in order to emerge victorious. Now, Tasca FC, on the other hand, is upbeat and daring to go as the player remains confident on matters uh, of that. Now, eight other matches will get underway in the league Sunday afternoon, including Poster Rangers, which will come, uh, will, will welcome Gurumahia, the thicker stadium. FC Leopards will face off with Bidco United at the Nanyayo National Stadium, and Ulinzi Stars will play against Wazito FC at the Ulinzi Sports Complex. The pre-season, that is at Lisa, making us perform well. Premier League, uh, Premier League, what do you want to press? Uh, Premier League people wako, wako quick sana. Uh, Kudile na ball hivyo msia na kupress na nawai. Hivyo na mna, mna panishiwa mki make mistake too. And on the Women's League, round four of the FKF Women Premier League went underway this afternoon with five matches lined up for action in various stadia across the country. Gaspar Women was in fine form as they defeated Zitex Parks 2 nil in the fixture at the Games, Games Cambridge uh, grounds. Arusi Anna fired Gaspar Women ahead of the stroke of halftime as Nyongesa Nabagala added the second uh, to seal the victory in the 88th minute. The result saw Gaspar Women remain 10th on the log on three points, while Zitex Parks also remained fourth on the log on four points. Game we make poor. In fact, like it on as a seminar, football, you know, you know, with football, football is a game of chances. Eh? We put a chance mingi sana, we put a chance mingi, we manage ingine, we pick them back mpaka was mpiga mlingoti. And as a seminar, to me, it was a bad day in office. Na Vila mm, si jatumia chanzi zangu na kidogo wasichana umetoka recess unaelewa so uh, being the first game mm, to me naona ni naenda tu kuwaka na finishing manake finishing yangu ndio imeni fail gaspo wako na wazoefu wengi sana eh? so wamepata chanzi mbili na kwazi plant hizo mbili tu eh? manake ukijaribu kuangalia tu mimi naweza sema the best team lost nasema imekuwa tough ya kuwa rais because first 35 to 38 minutes we could defend which when could defend me from a fit, but it may be tough. It's a quarter easy. Mine is a transition to the most of the part of the sana. I want to go to press. What I got, what big, what I quit. This is not where the moments. It's a quarter. Let to defend to to go the moment here to the Africa. As long as I want to score, then it's our. Some rugby action. KCB Rugby Football Club early today extended the unbeaten run in the 2022-2023 National Rugby 7 Series, the Kenya Cup League, after thrashing Varsity Boys <laughs> Black Clad 24-3 at the Lions Den Grounds in Raraka, Nairobi. KCB led the match 12-0 at the internal through tries from Wilfred Waswa and Martin Owila as Darwin Mukidza added a conversion. Mukidza converted his own try in the second half before Johnston Olinde scored the fourth and winning try for the bunker who, record, who recorded their fifth victory from five matches to take their points tally to 25. Also, Harlequins thrashed Catholic monks 45-14. Min Machine edged Masinde Moliro 24-23. Mingai Oles beat Nakuru RFC 25-18, while Mwamba RFC beat Strathmore Leos 27-20.
uh, compared to, to trying to do so many things at the same time and missing out on the bonus. The boys came to play. The only thing is that we were late to the party because we started settling in very late. Um, then again, losing too many balls in position, I mean in contact, when we were not clinical enough when we were going uh, into contact. Um, then again, I think decision making also is a factor that uh, costed us because we lost crucial points when we were supposed to go for the three. We decided to maybe take a scrum and we, of course we knew that their pack was heavier than us. Chit has thrashed Ice Lions, Minators 9-4 in the final match of the Kenya Ice Hockey League to be crowned the champions of the second edition of the league at the Panari Ice Skating Rink. The tournament, which had been halted indefinitely due to the COVID-19, drew participants from USA, Japan and Canada. been a great tournament. We had a big crowd and a lot of excitement. Most importantly for me, because I'm also the coach, we had great hockey. Highly skilled, highly competitive, and it was also a learning opportunity. The Kenya Ice Lions got to play against very top flight competition from Canada, Japan, and the United States. So it was a great learning experience also.